In today's health headlines, what daylight saving time means for your health. Can meditation help us make decisions? And an update on how the RSV vaccine for infants is working. Joining us is Dr. F. Perry Wilson, Associate Professor at Yale School of Medicine, Yale Medicine physician and author of How Medicine Works and When It Doesn't. Welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, it's daylight saving time and the health effects of spring ahead can go beyond the hour of lost sleep. How does it affect us? I'm sleepy. I'm, I'm sleepy too. We all woke up, woke up an hour early today. Um, but the effects, you're right, last longer than just the couple of days it takes to get reacclimated. In part because daylight saving time means that you're getting up when it is still dark outside. And that's rather unnatural. Natural sunlight helps to wake us up. It turns on the brain. It reduces hormones like melatonin that make us sleepy. And there's a lot of research that shows that waking up in those darkened hours can lead to some abnormal health effects, including some research which suggests that we're at higher risk of things like heart attacks during daylight saving time than during the other parts of the year. That's why I have my coffee with me today. <laughs> All right, a new study found that mindfulness meditation is not only good for stress, but can also boost our ability to learn and make decisions. What do we know about this? Yeah, a relatively small study, just 60 people, but I think really interesting because most of us think of meditation as something to do to, you know, to be more calm, maybe to be more present, but rarely to enhance our brain power. And yet this study showed that um, when they had people engage in this mindfulness meditation practice, they not only felt better, you know, from an emotional standpoint, but their memory improved and their ability to make decisions in complex situations improved. So this might be something, um, a bit of a, a side benefit to all the other benefits that people derive from meditation. The CDC released data on the effectiveness of the RSV vaccine for infants and found that hospitalizations have been cut by 90%. Your thoughts? Yeah, pretty impressive. Um, just, just a note, uh, it's not technically a vaccine. This is an RSV antibody that's giving, given to infants. There are vaccines, but they're only available for adults. This antibody cocktail essentially is given during RSV season to protect infants from the virus. And this is the first flu season. This winter season was the first flu and RSV season that it was given. And the results really are better than expected. RSV is very common um, and infants are particularly particularly susceptible. A lot of them don't have that immunity yet. They end up in the hospital, sometimes in the intensive care unit, sometimes even requiring a breathing machine to support them through the infection. So, so expect this to be a uh, common uh, part of that early childhood protection against those early childhood diseases uh, into the future at this point. All right. Thank you for that clarification. We appreciate it. Dr. F. Barry Wilson, have a great Monday.